a couple is driving along the road near the woods when a homeless man runs out in a panic. The boyfriend hits the brakes as the man crashes into the car with another young man running out of the woods behind him. They instantly put the man in the car to take him to the hospital, but the homeless man has already lost his senses, muttering that it came from the sky, revealing the strange gelatinous stuff on his hand. What is that creature? This is Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a movie titled The Blob 1988. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our story opens in a small town seemingly deserted. It looks like the whole town is watching the local football match. Paul Taylor has just made a touchdown. Meg, one of the cheerleaders, has her eyes on him. Now we see a boy named Brian in the countryside looking at an old broken wooden bridge. He finishes his beer and throws the can across the bridge, gets on his motorbike and rides back a distance from the bridge. He turns and accelerates towards the bridge. He hopes to jump the gap in the bridge, but something is wrong with the brakes. He wants to stop, but he can't. At the last moment, he pulls the bike down and slides over the edge with the bike. As he lays on the dirt, an old homeless man known as the Can Man, with his dog across the other side, is applauding Brian for his effort. Then he picks up the empty can and leaves with his dog. Back in town at the Pie Pan Cafe, Herb and the Sheriff is drinking iced tea and asking Fran, the cafe owner, if she'd like to go out and listen to some country music tonight. She tells him she's too busy. As the crowd from the football game descends on the town, Fran gives Herb the bill with a note saying she is off at 11 o'clock. A truck slows down outside and Brian jumps off the back. He sees Herb and walks around the corner and waits. Shortly after, Herb in his sheriff's car stops near the corner and congratulates Brian on his upcoming birthday, telling him the next time he's in trouble, he'll be going to jail, not juvenile hall. Brian walks over to Moss's garage and asks Moss if he can borrow some tools to fix his bike. They talk about the coming snow season. Moss reluctantly lends Brian some tools. In the woods near an old shack, the can man is squashing cans when his dog looks up at the sky. The can man looks up and sees a huge fireball heading towards him. It passes overhead and crashes a short distance away. He takes a small axe and goes to investigate. In town, Paul and his friend Scott go into the drugstore. While Scott is buying a packet of condoms, Reverend Meeker from the church talks to him about the football game. Tom Penny, the pharmacist, gives Scott the condoms, but Scott tells the Reverend they're for his friend Paul. He's embarrassed to admit they're for himself. Back in the woods, the can man walks down for a closer look at the fireball. It looks like a large rock cracked open with some sort of pink jelly inside. He takes a stick and pushes it into the crack, then pulls out a blob of the jelly. In an instant, the blob moves up the stick and onto his hand. In the home of Mrs. Penny, her young son Kevin is eating some jelly off of a plate. Kevin and his friend Eddie are going bowling with their friend Anthony. Paul arrives to take Meg out. Brian is in the woods working on his motorbike with a torch when suddenly the can man appears with the blob still attached to his hand. As Brian tries to stop him from cutting his own arm with the axe, the can man runs off into the woods. Paul and Meg are driving along the road near the woods when the can man runs out and Paul hits the brakes as the can man hits the front of the car, with Brian running out of the woods behind him. Paul and Meg put the can man in the car to take him to the hospital. The can man mutters that it came from the sky. Brian tells him to be careful of the stuff on his hand. Paul tells Brian he better come along to explain what happened. Brian then leaves Paul and Meg at the hospital. Paul notices something moving under the can man's blanket in the other room. He sees that the can man's eyes are completely white. He calls the doctor, but when the doctor removes the blanket, most of the can man's body has been eaten away. Paul runs into the doctor's office to call the sheriff, but the blob is behind the door and moves up to the ceiling. While Paul is talking to the sheriff, he looks up and the blob drops completely over him. Meg hears Paul screaming and runs in to help him, but he's covered by the blob. She tries to pull him free, but his arm comes off and she drops it and faints on the floor. Outside the hospital, Meg's parents are with her. A police car arrives with Brian in the back seat. Meanwhile, Scott is parked near the roadside with his new girlfriend, Vicky. As he gets out to fix them another drink at the back of the car, he doesn't see the blob sliding into the car. Scott thinks Vicky has fallen asleep, but suddenly, long tentacles quickly wrap around his arm as her head turns towards his body, and now it is taking over Scott's body as well. Meg sneaks away from her house to look for Brian. The blob is getting even bigger and heading towards the town during this time. At the police station, Herb and Bill are questioning Brian about the can man. The sheriff releases Brian because there is no evidence proving Brian's involvement in the can man's death. As Brian walks out, Meg drives up in her car. She asks him for help, but he's not interested. He crosses the road and enters the cafe, but Meg follows him. While he's eating a sandwich, Meg asks him again for help. In the cafe's kitchen, the sink is blocked and the cook, called George, tries to unblock the sink. The blob comes out of the drain hole and grabs George by his head and pulls him into the sink. 
Fran enters the kitchen and screams, and Brian and Meg come running in. They watch as George disappears down the drain. Then a moment later, the blob bursts out of the sink and tries to catch them. Brian and Meg run into the freezer room. The blob tries to squeeze under the door but stops when it touches the icy floor. Fran jumps out of a side window and runs to a nearby phone booth to call the sheriff, but the blob covers the phone booth and she is trapped inside it. The police station receptionist tells her that Herb left to go to the cafe. As the blob is moving over the phone booth, she sees Herb's head inside the blob. It breaks a glass and consumes Fran. Brian and Meg leave the freezer room to find the blob has gone. Out in the street, the Reverend sees the huge blob come out of the side alley and ooze down into a roadside drain. He ventures into the cafe to see if anyone is hurt. In the doorway of the freezer room, he picks up what looks like some pink crystals on the ice and puts them in a small jar. Brian and Meg enter the police station looking for the sheriff, but he's not there. The receptionist tells them that Deputy Bill has gone out to where the can man was found. They drive out but find Bill's car is empty. They walk into the forest and hear a noise and see lights in the sky. As they run, they're surrounded by men in hazmat suits. Some are soldiers with guns. But a Dr. Meadows tells them to lower their weapons. He is the head of the government group of scientists looking for the source of the problem. They think the problem is microbes from outer space, but Brian informs him that it is much more than just microbes. Back in town, Kevin and Eddie are in the theater watching a horror movie. In the projection room, the air conditioning has stopped working, so the projectionist named Hobbs climbs into the ducting to see what's wrong, but the blob is in there and it attacks him. Shortly after, another man enters the projection room but can't find Hobbs. He looks up at the ceiling and sees a blob as its tentacles reach down and grab him. Dr. Meadows tells Brian and Meg they should go back to town in a containment van for quarantine. On the way back, Brian tells Meg he's going to jump out, but she doesn't join him. When the van arrives in town, she can see all the townspeople have been gathered to be put into quarantine. She finds her parents and then realizes that Kevin and Eddie must have gone to the theater. Meg sneaks past security to go and find her little brother. In the theater, Kevin turns to talk to the man behind him when suddenly long pink tentacles pull the man out of his seat and up to the ceiling. The movie stops playing and everyone in the theater screams in panic, trying to run out of the theater. Meg arrives at the theater as everyone is running out. She gets inside and finds Kevin and Eddie and they run for an exit as the blob is coming after them. The blob is growing bigger from devouring so many people. They go through an exit door and run off as the blob breaks down the door. They run into a dead-end alley but remove a steel cover to the stormwater drain and climb down just in time to escape. Back in the woods, Brian overhears the scientist's conversation. It seems that this meteorite was actually placed into orbit by these scientists with the living organism as an experiment, but the organism has mutated and become a predator apart from growing 1,000 times its original mass. Another man in a hazmat suit, Colonel Hargis, is talking to Meadows. They plan to tell the public that it's only medical quarantine. They intend to keep everyone contained in the town. Brian hears Meadows talking with an assistant, Mr. Jennings, who doesn't agree with what they're doing to the people, keeping them all locked up. Meadows tells Jennings that this is an experiment in biological warfare and possibly the greatest weapon ever made. They get a report that the blob has been seen in the town. Meadows tells Colonel Hargis that they need to capture the blob that he calls the organism alive. He says the townspeople are expendable. Just then a soldier puts a rifle to the back of Brian's head, but Brian pushes him away and manages to escape. Meadows calls everyone to stop Brian, but he runs back to his motorbike and rides off with some of the soldiers after him, some in trucks and even a helicopter. He comes to the old bridge and makes a jump across the gap and gets away. He comes to the opening of a large storm water drain. Back in town, some of the scientists are searching through the underground tunnels. Meg, Kevin, and Eddie are walking through waist-deep water in the underground tunnels when the blob comes after them. Meg and the boys try to climb up some pipes, but Eddie gets pulled under the water and Meg tries to save him, but she's too late. Kevin gets out onto the street, but Meg can't fit through the gap. Three scientists with guns arrive and one shoots at the blob, but it turns and grabs him. Meg climbs up to another drain pipe just in time for Brian to see her and pull her out. They ride off on his motorbike. They find one of the scientists, he's hurt, and he tells them that the blob got the other two. They run off together and find a manhole, but when Meadows looks down the hole and sees Brian, he orders the manhole to be closed, parking a truck on the manhole. Brian takes a grenade launcher from the scientist and blasts the manhole open, tipping the truck over. They climb out onto the street and Brian tells Deputy Bill about the truth, that the blob is man-made and Meadows knows all about it. Just then, the blob reaches out with the tentacle and pulls Meadows down the hole. Colonel Hargis throws a bomb down the hole which explodes but only enrages the blob, which burst out onto the street. Now it's gigantic. It starts killing people as they try to escape. 
Brian tells Meg to run, but he runs off in another direction. A scientist tries to burn it with a flamethrower, but gets hit by the blob, and the flames reach the Reverend. As Meg fires a CO2 extinguisher at the Reverend to put out the fire, Bill pulls him to safety. Meg fires the extinguisher at the blob, and it pulls away. It can't stand the cold. A large crowd of people run into the hall, but when the blob tries to get under the door, Meg keeps firing the extinguisher at it. Soon, everyone is looking for more CO2 extinguishers to keep it away, but they don't have enough. Brian arrives with the snowmaker truck from Moss's garage. He's firing man-made snow at the blob, but it tips the truck over and the tank on the back rolls off nearby. Meg gets out and sees Brian trapped in the truck. She grabs a rifle and a timer bomb from a fallen scientist and starts shooting at the blob so Brian can escape. As the blob comes towards her, she climbs up on the truck's CO2 tank and places the bomb down and sets the timer. When the bomb explodes the CO2 tank, it makes so much snowfall from the sky. The blob lies immobile, frozen by the snow, turned to pink crystals. Brian and Meg hug each other, then Meg's father comes to hold her. Moss tells a man called Dave to bring the dump truck to take the frozen blob to the ice house. Now we see a huge tent with the scarred reverend inside, preaching to some people, telling them to repent because the day of reckoning is coming. He leaves the service and a woman asks him when that day will be. He reaches into a bag and pulls out the small jar he placed the bob crystals in on that fateful night. But now the jar contains a small blob. He tells her it will be soon. Oh no, not another blob. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.